What's up everybody, Greg here with Lens Protego and Lens Rentals, and in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how I deal with exposure recovery in over and underexposed environments. I've been doing a ton of tests recently with a bunch of different cameras, and I've been getting a lot of questions on how I actually recover these over and underexposed images. So we're gonna jump into a project that I was working on, which is the Canon EOS R, and I'm gonna show you how I go about doing all of this exposure recovery and the color grading and getting it back to a good looking image. So let's get into the computer and we'll get started. So for doing all of the exposure recoveries, I use Premiere and I use the Lumetri color panel. Occasionally I'll jump into DaVinci Resolve if I'm doing some raw footage from either like Red or Black Magic, just because it's a little bit easier to deal with in there. But for the most part, Lumetri is the way to do it. Starting wow. off with the scopes that I use, there are a bunch of them in Premiere, but there's only two that really matter to me. The first one is going to be the waveform RGB, which is in the bottom left-hand corner, and that's what I use for my exposure correction. And then also the Vectorscope YUV, which I use for color correction and color saturation to sort of match them and get them the same. Now, I don't have to do too much tweaking in there, but I will show you how I do it, because in some cases when you're doing extreme cases of over or under exposure, there's gonna be some color shifts that you need to account for. If you look in the program window right here, you can see two different shots. The one on the left is our correct exposure, which you can see on the left of the waveform between 20 and 80 IRE. And then on the right side of the program window is the overexposed shot, which is about three stops overexposed. And you can see that on the right side of the waveform monitor which is running about 50 to 60 IRE in the shadow area and clipping all the way up into 100 IRE. So the first thing that we're gonna do instead of working in a log image is add a LUT on top of to start with. So I have an adjustment layer here that's just gonna grade both of them for me. And then I'm gonna use this C log to wide DR full. So this is gonna grade that log image to a 709 color space. Now you can see we already got a lot more contrast on our correctly exposed. It's up into the 90 IREs for the bright areas and then down into the dark areas, we do have some that are almost touching zero IRE. If we look on the right side where we're having the overexposed image, there's a lot of blown out clipping information and our shadows have now been pushed into the 60 to 70 range, which is definitely too bright. So after I put on a LUT to get it to a 709 color space and we're not working with the log image anymore, we're ready to start doing some clip specific adjustments. So I'm gonna go to the overexposed image here and then over in the basic correction tab, I'm gonna go down to tone and I'm just gonna do the exposure adjustment. I know it's way too bright right now so I need to bring that exposure back down. So I'm just gonna bring it down until there's nothing that's being clipped and nothing that's being crushed at the bottom. If I brought it down too far, we're gonna start losing information on the bottom here. And if I didn't bring it down far enough, we'd still have some of that clipped white in the highlights. So I'm gonna bring it down right into the middle here. That's looking pretty good. Almost sort of matching it up with the correct exposure shot. Obviously there's some things like the shadows aren't low enough here and the highlights aren't high enough, but we're gonna tweak that with the curves, which we're gonna jump into in a second. So jumping over into the curves, we have our main curve adjustment here. And we're just gonna start with adjusting the highlights. So clicking in the top right here, we'll bring those highlights up. And this is where we're gonna start matching them up more closely with our correct exposed image. So bringing that down a little bit, now I'm gonna go and grab some of the shadows and bring those down. I usually like to start with the shadows and highlights areas. So like sort of these two points, and then I'll go and do the whites and blacks after that. So once I bring shadows down a little more, and again, I'm just moving right across. So I'm seeing this yellow area here is a little bit under 30. So I just wanna kind of match that on our overexposed image. And then I'm gonna go in the opposite direction and do the highlights. So as our green is a little bit under the 80, so this is a little bit low, sort of the same thing for the red. So I'm gonna grab the highlight area and bring that up again and we're getting it real close. That's looking really, really similar. And we're gonna look at some of the waves in the middle here. And this is actually all looking pretty good. The only thing that's a little bit too much on this one is that the blacks are really dark. So I'm just gonna grab the bottom here and just slightly lift that up until we get it looking a little bit closer. Raise those shadows a little bit more and just slightly tweaking it, getting them as close as possible. 
Now, if you don't have an image that you're going side by side with, you can just do this to eye to see what looks best, but I'm trying to match these images as best as possible. So I'm really happy with that curve adjustment and the exposure is looking really, really solid. This is coming back from three stops overexposed. So starting with an image that looks like this and going to an image that looks like this. Not too bad. Now this one's actually looking really, really good and I don't see too many color problems with it, but sometimes if you're pulling too much information out of a really dark scenario or trying to bring it back from a highlight, you can get some weird sensor color shifting. So the other thing that I like to check is the color. The first thing that we're gonna do is switch over to our vector scope YUV so we can see our saturation. And then in the basic correction tab, I just like to grab the saturation and drag it around so I can see what's actually being affected on the overexposed image. So once I have an idea, I'll set it back to 100 and we'll just leave it right there. And then the other thing is jumping into the HSL secondary. So now that I can see that this outer one on the red and even on the yellow is a little bit more saturated because of how we've brought it back, I'm gonna go in and select both of those colors. So we'll click those two and then go in here and just bring back the saturation on those two. Now starting to get a little bit closer and if you need to you can add more lumetry layers and then just add more of these hsl secondaries if you wanted to tweak every single color individually to really get it exactly the same so to recap really quick the first step is to adjust your exposure so bringing it either down or up depending if your shot is under or overexposed then you want to go into your curves adjustment and adjust your contrast starting with the points in the middle so sort of your shadows and your highlights you can use as many points along there as you want to have it as accurate i usually like to stick with two or three just to keep it kind of a nice general curve then i'm going to go in and grab the end points so either the blacks or the whites then i'll switch over to the vector scope yuv and go into my hsl secondary colors and adjust the saturation for all of the different tones in the image to make it exactly the same but that's basically the whole process for doing this exposure recovery. I hope this helped you out and you got some tips and tricks to go and use in your own footage. If you have any questions about this process, make sure to leave those in the comments below. And if you like this type of video and you wanna see more of them, make sure to hit like, subscribe for new videos every single week, and I'll see you in the next one.